Okay guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to make one of these SOIC 8 pogo pen adapters that's uh, 3D printed. Um, this is uh, Raul's design, so uh, you'll have to get with him if you want to buy one. I, I don't know if he's going to sell the 3D files or if he's going to sell the whole thing uh, assembled, uh, but I, I do know he wants to monetize it. So uh, definitely, if you're interested in buying one of these, get into the Facebook group, which will be down in the uh, description. Um, and just uh, ask about them and uh, he, he should be able to get with you and, and let you know but uh, he sent me the files to test it out so I 3d printed one put it together uh, and now I am going to 3d print another one and put another one together for the video so uh, yeah let's uh, get into this build here we're gonna do a little bit of 3d printing today and then we'll uh, put it the rest of the way together Okay, so let's do the really tedious part here of putting the pogo pins into the plug. Uh, now, if your plug comes out looking like this one, uh, uh, where the holes are, you know, uneven sizes and some of them are even completely clogged, because uh, this should be the face down side of it. Um, if, if you come out like that, you need to either level your bed again, you weren't getting good adhesion, or uh, you need to try putting like some glue stick down on the on the bed. So it's a good little trick to get the thing to stick. Uh, if you've if you've already leveled it and you've already cleaned it with isopropyl alcohol and you're still not getting good adhesion, uh, put a little bit of glue stick, then take uh, that rubbing alcohol again and wipe it down. Uh, just a, that way you have the thinnest layer of, of that adhesive on there and you'll get really good adhesion uh, if you do that. So that's a little trick I like to use, especially on these uh, glass um, beds uh, that, that definitely helps a lot more. So yep, that, this one didn't come out quite perfect. Uh, it looked like, because when it, when it 3D prints it, what it'll do is it prints the walls and then it fills it in. So these little holes, it's just one little tiny circle there. So if one shifts a little bit, it'll plug the hole there. So that's that's exactly what happens there. So this one, I came back and added, because I'd already leveled the bed, I'd already cleaned the bed, added a little glue stick, um, and, and it worked perfect. You normally don't need to use the glue stick unless you have like a lot of fine detail, then, then that comes in and helps. So let's get these in here. Now these are still a tight fit on it, so they're not gonna go straight into it. Uh, we're going, this way to that side where the nut because you want the the mark this one has a pin one mark on there on the outside so you can actually read it once you do it so let's heat up our soldering iron you can you can use the soldering iron at a low temperature uh, that way you're less likely to to like melt the whole thing uh, or you can just be careful with it and do it at a full temperature let me get this mat out of the way might be hard to see what we're doing against the wood, but the rubber mat makes it a little bit harder to do. So I'm going to just move all of this out of the way here. All right, so I'm going to take the soldering iron and we're going to hold the pogo pin kind of tight to it and just heat up just the pogo pin. We're not heating up the plastic itself. We're just heating up the pogo pin and it will uh, melt its way through the plastic. And there we go. We just want to just stick it out just enough that it's poking out the end of it. Uh, because if you if you have it sticking too far out, they can flex. So you just want the pogo pin to just barely poke out the end where the entirety of the um, the actual contact is exposed, but not much of the uh, brass housing is exposed on the exterior side of it. Uh, so this it will just do uh, do this. Uh, what, seven more times? All right, so uh, as you can see there, a uh, little bit tedious to do, 
and they're not perfectly even, which is completely fine. We're going to adjust them, and then we will put the, um, we'll, we're going to take some UV solder mask and uh, put that on there to help keep everything in place. You can probably use uh, any kind of epoxy glue, like a two-part epoxy, uh, to put it together if you if you want to. Uh, I just use the UV solder mask. It seems to work good for me. And that's just to lock everything in so it doesn't ever move again. Um, and I went with solder mask just because I knew it could take the heat from uh, soldering to it. So yeah, we just uh, adjust these all to about the same height because once you melt, uh, once you melt it, it, it kind of bores out the hole a little bit bigger and gets it in there. These these holes are slightly undersized uh, for them, so that way we have to force them in there uh, and give it that. These uh these little pogo pins are actually a little bit more durable to pressure than you'd think, but I'm not putting a ton of pressure on it. I'm just putting a nice constant pressure, uh, pushing down on the plug while I heat up the brass on there and then it goes goes through it so uh yeah let's uh get the uv solder mask on there and then uh we'll move on from there okay let's get this uh solder mask on here uh pretty easy to do uh, one thing try your best to keep it off your hand but it always gets on your hand i can already see a small amount of it on my finger i don't know if the camera's picking it up or not uh but yeah let's stand this up We're just going to get like a little bubble of it on the end there and dab it on there. This is solder mask, so try to keep it off of your pins because you do need to solder to them in a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a nice easy connector for this. All right, so let's uh, take this little swab here. She's that spread it around. Okay, so now we've kind of painted the whole thing there with the UV solder mask. So now you need a UV light to cure it. But again, you can just use regular glue. And if you get it on whatever surface you're working on, uh, it's easy enough to get off. It's okay if you cure it. It's just gonna scrape right off of there. So uh, yeah. Kind of, kind of a tedious process again. Um, what, you're, what I was trying to do, painting it back and forth there, was trying to get it in between the uh, the the pins in the hole a little bit uh, too, just to help get it snugged in there nice. And if you if you do paint up on it, or if cap capillary action kind of pulls it up to the top of it, that's okay. Uh, just cure it because uh, it's, it's a whole lot easier to cure it and then scrape uh, than it is to to try to clean it off while it's um, curing so and just make sure you're moving it around uh, as you're trying to uh, do this because you do um, end up you have shadows from from the pegs sticking up there so you want to make sure you get a, a good cure on the whole thing and it depends on what uv cure solder mask you're using for how long it takes um, this mechanic stuff that I, I got, it takes three or four minutes of it. So I'm going to finish curing it and then, uh, come back and solder it on there. So, okay. So now let's, uh, actually solder this thing together and get it finished. Uh, make sure you put your heat shrink on first because it's not going to make it over that. So if you forget to put it on, uh, you know how that goes. All right. So, um, let's go ahead and put the wires through. Make sure you push enough through that you can actually uh, see the orientation of it when you're working it. So like this is pin one. Uh, this one is going to be the opposite side. So uh, just make sure you uh, flip flop it each time. So uh, pin one would then be pin eight would, would be this next wire. So. Uh, just make sure you, you do that. And I was actually showing it wrong. This is pin one. So, uh, yeah, pin one, then pin eight uh, is the order here. So you could also just go every other one. So one, and then two, and then three, and put them on first, and then flip it to the other side. I just crisscross it, so just go eat every other one. Um, I mean, not every other one. I, I go 
one by one down the line instead of that but ends up twisting it a bunch but i'm only gonna solder on one on camera uh and then i'll, I'll do the rest so i put mine in a vise to hold it while i'm working on it so make sure yep i got pin one facing up which is this is why i'm not going to record soldering every single wire on there you'll get the concept after one um but yeah so because I have to flip it in the vise each time. So it, it, it takes quite a while. It'll, it'll take a lot of recording. Uh, <laughs> a lot of footage to then compress down. So not really worth recording every single one of them. But we'll get one on there. So first tin the wire. And then tin the pin that we're soldering to. And this one's actually a little bit longer than it should be, so let's trim this down. You want these nice and short, so that way they're not flagging out on either end of it, um, just, just to help prevent having shorts. There we go. That's all there is to it. So uh, this would be just so that way you're seeing uh, what I was talking about. So now we got to rotate it over. And we'll be soldering down pin 8. So same thing, we're going to tin the wire first. Tin the pin. Trim it, because again, we ended up... When I spliced these, it came out with a slightly long splice. Alright, here we go. That one was a little bit close to the other one, so let's try again. And there we go. So just repeat that. Uh, we, we have six more times to do it, uh, and then it's done. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish soldering all of these down, and then we'll uh, continue on with the video from here. All right, now before we put this thing all the way together, let's just uh, give it a couple of threads here, get it to catch. Yeah, that caught it crooked. There we go. All right, so we got it threaded on there. Before we put this heat shrink on, because the heat shrink, mm, kind of permanent there, uh, let's go ahead and test this out and make sure it works. So uh, I'm just going to use my little Arduino tester uh, because the uh, CH341 that I have, uh, this guy, it's dead, I fried it, and the um, Mini Pro won't do it in circuit. So let's uh, just go ahead and do that and plug it in and test it. Okay, so before you ask, um, will this fit underneath the screen? No, I already knew it wouldn't uh, before building this. They just don't fit under there. There's really no way to make one that will fit under there either because the length of that pogo pin is about as high as this. So you're not going to be able to make one that fits underneath there. Uh, okay, so pin one. Let's make sure we get it lined up good. And let's try to read this. And there we go. We successfully read it. So, yep, you just have to make sure you line it up good and you can read the EEPROM. Um, now, this EEPROM is definitely corrupted. I already knew it was um, before doing this video. So yeah, this is a corrupted EEPROM, so don't worry about what was on it, but it did successfully read it. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure that you have your, um, your pins lined up good on there uh, before you read and write it. And uh, I would definitely suggest uh, saving it. Uh, just in case you, you had a loose connection on there. But definitely, this is a whole lot more convenient than those clips, because those clips, you have the same problem where you clip it on there and you get a partial read from it moving and stuff like that. Um, so definitely make sure you have a good connection on it uh, before you commit to um, uh, 
you know, believing what you got off of there, what you read off of it. So, you know, you're going to want to put it on there and just hold good, constant pressure on it uh, while you're reading it. Uh, you're not going to want to use a device that is constantly powered. It always has power to the uh, pins on here because then if you uh, slip off, you can short the leads together in between on the legs. So uh, you, it, you don't want to have constant power there because then you can short it and damage it, which is exactly what happened with the um, CH341, is these constantly have the five bolts to it and it slipped and shorted dead short to the um, uh, data lines on there and damaged it. Um, so yeah, so it, it does work. So we, we know we have a good connection on everything. So now we can just take our piece of uh, heat shrink here and just get our hot air station out and shrink it on there. All right, so this is uh, definitely, this is done. Um, I'll, I'll probably be sending this one to uh, Raul who, who designed it. Um, he just has to give me his address so I can send it to him. <laughs> Um, I got a whole pile of these things to send to them too. Um, just, uh, just like two, two of them that are, I think I have two, maybe just one that's, uh, assembled and then a bunch of parts for them. Um, but yeah, just, uh, if you're, if you're interested in this, uh, I, I don't own the rights to it, so I can't sell you one. Uh, but just join the Facebook group and ask about it. And I'm sure, um, uh, Raul will either sell you the files so you can print it yourself or uh, just sell you an already assembled one. Um, I don't know what kind of time frame we're looking at before he'd start doing that, uh, but I, I do know he has some interest in monetizing uh, this design, and I, I think he deserves it too. Um, it, it's not easy uh, drawing out a model, especially one that looks this much like a meth pipe. So that way, um, you know, you, you're going down the street and the cops pull you over with this, uh, make sure it's assembled. <laughs> or, or else you might end up on the next trial on TV. Um, so, yeah, uh, I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. I, was, I know it's a pretty simple video here where we just assembled um, this tool, kind of went over what it is. Um, I, I think this was a good project that he came up with. Uh, I think more more power to him for actually taking the time and designing something like this. Uh, a lot of guys aren't going to, you know, they'll have ideas, but they're not going to actually try to bring them to fruition. Uh, but Raul actually brought this to fruition. He, he did all the work, designed it, um, sent, sent me the models, and I just 3D printed it and put it together. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a really cool project. I, I, I really love seeing the things that you guys come up with. Um, and uh, yeah, if you haven't already, join the Facebook group. Uh, Raul's in the Facebook group. It should be down in the description. Uh, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.